Chris, what is our fifth main topic today? Woo! LJ <laughs> Maloney. Hey, everyone. Love the show. So after seeing the reveals from D23, I'm not too excited about anything. I mean, I am looking forward to Mandalorian Season 3, but I knew that was coming. The Marvel shows and upcoming movies they presented, along with the Star Wars presentation, just did not grab me. I mean, not much on the Fantastic Four front. Was D23 a letdown? Maybe even a missed opportunity to excite fans? Is it just me? Is there anything from D23 you guys are excited about? All right. Thanks a lot for writing that in, LJ. Now, listen, we, we've we spoken on the show today about a couple of things that I do think were shining bright moments of D23. Uh, again, the Secret Invasion trailer, um, the uh, Mandalorian Season 3 trailer, Thunderbolt's announcement was the only real news. I don't believe there's any other way to say it, but D23 was an absolute failure. It was an absolute failure on Disney's part. Um, and I will kind of go into why I think it was an absolute, uh, it was a failure. And quite frankly, the way you put it in your email is right. It was a complete missed opportunity. It was a complete missed opportunity. Now, before we go into the specific details of why, I've had a lot of people write to me and, and, and just legitimately inquiring and saying, you know, John, do you think some people and maybe even your own uh, lack of enthusiasm for what they did at D23 and the letdown you feel by D23, could that be perhaps a result of the whole not letting your speculation become expectation? Were we expecting too much? Were we expecting the Fantastic Four cast announcement to happen? Were we expecting Ryan Reynolds to come on stage as Deadpool? We were expecting all that kind of stuff. I would say this, that I don't think any of us needed, we're talking about speculation becoming expectation. Yeah, we were kind of expecting Fantastic Four to be announced, but they didn't. That's okay. They they didn't need to announce a Fantastic Four like we kind of thought they would. But if they had done a bunch of things but left out just Fantastic Four, that's perfectly fine. See, speculation becoming expectation bites us in the ass when we get, as fans, hooked on one idea that they are going to do this, and if they don't specifically do that, then it ruins it for me, right? They could have done a lot of stuff at D23 and not had Ryan Reynolds come out on stage and announce Deadpool 3. They could have done a lot at D23 and not have... Chris Evans walk on stage and announce he's returning as Steve Rogers in the MCU. That none, there was no specific thing they needed to do. There was no one point of speculation becoming expectation. The problem is they didn't announce anything, nothing outside of projects that we already knew, even with Thunderbolts. Alexi's already in the MCU. Bucky's already in the MCU. Ghost is already in the MCU. I mean, don't get me wrong. We were just talking about how much I did like that announcement, and I did. But it's not groundbreaking news. You know, also, you said something. There was an expectation that they themselves set. Because you were talking about, and we've been talking about dropping bombs. They did at the last well, D23. And, and let's go into the Campia classroom here for a second, because that's exactly where I'm going to start. You see, because Disney... They have set, they've made this pretty clear, like starting years ago, that they want their own in house show to be the main event. They were going to try to wean themselves off of, maybe not entirely, but away from Comic Con D23. And in previous years, they have utilized D23 to make their big announcements. Just go back to the last D23, okay? The last D23, it was insane totally unknown announcement after announcement after announcement after announcement oh hey we're gonna do an obi-wan show what ewan mcgregor comes walking out on stage says i'm obi-wan again what oh hey have you ever heard of she hulk we're bringing she hulk into the mcu what remember moon knight probably never heard of them unless you watch robert meyer burnett but guess what? <laughs> Moon Knight is coming into the MCU. What? Hey, guys, you ever hear of a relatively new character in the comics, Ms. Marvel? Yeah, coming into the MCU. What? I don't mean Rogue to get Steve Squadron. Austin. Rogue, I mean, no, no, Rogue Squadron was announced at the Investor Day. Oh, what? Uh, was it was it? The, the Disney Invest. But, but they made... 
four, five, six, like major, major, completely unheard of projects, never known about, announcements, got on stage and made. They set the precedent, all right? They set the precedent for that. That we don't know what the announcements are going to be, but they set the precedent that at D23, and even going into Comic-Con, we said they're not going to announce any new projects. We knew they weren't because D23 is coming. And sure enough, Comic-Con came and went, and they made no new announcements about any new projects. They dropped some trailers, made some release dates, but, but nothing huge or significant. And that was fine because they were going to do a D23. Here's the other thing, though. Um, Lucas uh, Film needed this. Star Wars is in a place right now of uncertainty, a waning interest in its fan community. I mean, a lot of us still very much Star Wars fans, but our expectations for Star Wars projects now coming out are a little bit lowered, right? Obi-Wan was not so great. I mean, it's, it's all subjective. Maybe you loved Obi-Wan, and if you did, that's awesome. I certainly didn't dislike Obi-Wan, but Obi-Wan was not great. Book of Boba Fett was not great. I mean, then the last feature film they had, Last Skywalker, or uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Skywalker, was abysmal. Again, it's just my own subjective opinion. And of course, we're very excited about Andor and, and we're excited about Mandalorian season three, but, but right now Star Wars is in a state. This was your opportunity as Lucasfilm to get your fan base invigorated and excited again. This is your opportunity. I remember going back a bunch of years at Comic-Con, like the DC fandom was like, they were taking their lumps and you know, Marvel was shining and everything, but you know what would happen? Comic-Con would come along and they'd make some big announcements and drop some things and whatever. And all of a sudden, even if it was just for a little while, the excitement was back in DC again, right? This was Lucasfilm's opportunity to come out there and do something that got the fans excited again. What did they do? They showed us a trailer for the third season of a show that we already know is coming. They show some footage to the audience of Indiana Jones, which is great. But again, it's, it's yeah, we know. We've known for seven years that you're making this movie. We've known that they shot it. We know here's, you talked about it at whatever. Yeah, yeah, we know that. We know that. They gave us, hey, everybody, want to get excited? Here's season two of a mediocre animated show in The Bad Batch. Yay! Who the fuck cares? And listen, all subjective, if you like Bad Batch, that's great, but I've never heard one person say Bad Batch is their favorite animated show. What about Tales of the Jedi? And again, Tales of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. We'd like to present to you a cartoon show filled with character, cartoon characters we've all seen already many fucking times! Look, everybody, it's Ahsoka. Ooh, we've never seen that character before. Look, everybody, it's Mace Windu. Oh, wow, it's Mace Windu. We've never seen him before in animated form 18 times. I mean, don't get me wrong. These are perfectly fine. They're perfectly fine. But in a opportunity to invigorate your fan base, like you did at the last D23, because holy shit, man, when you, you and McGregor came out on stage and say, ask me if I'm Obi-Wan again. Yes. I mean, like, and the announced the show, but like that got the whole Star Wars world excited. And the elephant in the room with Lucasfilm right now that the entire Star Wars fan community, including myself, is asking what the actual F is going on with the movies. Maybe you can't come out and absolutely announce we've got a release date for Taika Waititi. But even if you can't do that, come out and like I mentioned this on my John Campy after dark Kathleen Kennedy needed to come out on stage and she needed to say now let's talk about the movies Star Wars was born on the big screen and Star Wars is meant for the big screen now we don't have like specific things to talk about today but we want to let you know we've got a lot of work going on. Of course, you guys have heard that Academy Award winning filmmaker Taika Waititi is working hard at, at this and whatever. Our friend Kevin Feige is working. I mean, just giving an update. Just an update. This, listen, I want to drive this point home. This isn't some afternoon tea. This is D23. This is supposed to be the showstopper, the main event, prime time. This is it. 
This is our event. This is our Super Bowl. This is our World Series. This is our Stanley Cup Final. This is it. This is our Academy Awards. This is it. All eyes on us. People around the world, fly in. Come into Anaheim. Come to D23, media of the world. Pay attention to what's coming out of us. And this was your spotlight. This was your chance. And you did nothing. It was a fucking fart in the wind. A, a missed opportunity of grand proportions, especially coming off of the last D23. When you did shake the world, when you gave, and again, we're not saying they have to tell everybody every detail about everything, but they literally announced nothing. They're not a single project that we didn't already know about, or even an update to some of the projects we've been waiting to hear about. Mm. Like, this week, two pieces of casting announcements got, of Acolyte got broke. They didn't even bring up the Acolyte at this thing. That was odd. Why do you think that was? That I have no idea. I don't want to try to get into Kathleen Kennedy's head and pretend to understand what's going on there. But let, let's go back to the classroom for a second. Not only did Lucasfilm need this, I would say Marvel needed this. <clears throat> now, Marvel is not in the same straits as, say, Lucasfilm is in. Marvel is still putting out movies that make a billion dollars and $800 million and whatever. Okay, that's all great. But for the first time since its inception, Marvel is on its heels a little bit. For the first time since their inception. Now, I know I've been a little critical of Marvel stuff the last couple of years. You know, I didn't did not love Falcon the Winter Soldier. I didn't love Loki. I straight up didn't like Hawkeye. Black Widow was in. Eh. You know, I, and I get that. She-Hulk has so far has been okay. Uh, you know, you got Thor Love and Thunder. That was pretty divisive amongst... I, I mean, I still enjoyed it, but it was lower tier Marvel for me. You had Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, which I still enjoyed, but it was lower tier Marvel for me. I think it is completely fair to say that the the energy around Marvel right now has never been lower. It's still pretty damn high. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not trying to say that, man, Marvel is down for the count. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. But considering Marvel is used to hovering around 10, the energy level is now hovering around 7, and it's never been like that since its inception. And so you roll into D23, where last time you dropped bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb, this is your opportunity to invigorate and excite that fan base again. And again, they didn't need to come out and announce eight new projects. They didn't have to come out and start listing off every film coming in phase six, seven, eight, and nine. No, you didn't have to do any of that. You didn't even have to announce the cast of Fantastic Four. I, I have my theories about why they didn't do that. And that's perfectly good. You didn't have to bring Ryan Reynolds out on stage to officially announce Deadpool. But there are things you know you're doing. And there are things you know that are coming that you could have taken that opportunity to at least make one announcement, one thing that the fan base did not yet know about. And they squandered that opportunity badly. And then the reaction, because once that panel ended, I was like, I know exactly what kind of feedback we're about to hear. And I, and I got on Twitter and it was, yeah, everybody was like, well, that was nothing. And instead of raising the excitement about your brand, I actually visibly saw in a metric excitement level for Marvel actually go down a little bit as a result of D23. Hey guys, we want to thank one of the sponsors of today's video, BetterHelp. Let me ask you something. How well would you take care of your car if you knew that was going to be the only car you ever had for your entire life? Well, that's how our brains and our minds work. So why don't we treat them the same way? Because how we take care of our minds will affect how we experience life. So it's important to invest time and care into keeping it healthy. Now, there are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or taking power naps, but there's also BetterHelp Online Therapy therapy. Now, I've talked about this before, but I've never understood this stigma attached to people wanting to seek out ways to improve their mental health. When somebody decides to go to the gym to improve their physical health, we think that's great. Well, that's the same way we need to look at taking care of our mental health as well. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you're not comfortable with that. And it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. So guys, listen, right now, the John Campia Show viewers and listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com.
betterhelp.com slash campia. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash campia. But I, I don't know, Rob, Jump, yeah. you heard about this. What do you think? Here's what I was missing. This is what I wanted from Marvel. Maybe not so much announcements. I want to understand the multiverse saga. I think one of the things that Marvel has done is there is no forward momentum in terms of excitement about this these coming phases because we don't have any sense of a roadmap of where is this all going to lead. I think it's great. Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, awesome. I have no idea how they're going to get there. I don't see the way the Marvel Cinematic Universe is right now. How are they going to create the kind of excitement that Infinity War and Endgame? Dude, I was bursting at the seams when those movies were coming out. I was, my heart was filled with excitement. I was so, I, I couldn't wait with the way they built up the whole Thanos, the Infinity Saga. This, I think what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is missing is there is no excitement because we don't have a roadmap. It's all over the place. Multiverse of Madness over here. You know, Thor Love and Thunder over here. What does any of this have to do what, I mean, Quantum Mania, Kang's terrifying. That's what we heard. Okay, so how did Ant Man and the Wasp become entwined with Kang? And, yeah, and, and and that's what I'm supposed to get excited about. I mean, I would have thought that Wakanda Forever would have been the launching point for maybe the apex of things to begin with. I don't know. Like, I I like the Marvel movies, but I don't. I personally don't feel any forward momentum with my excitement about the films. I don't. They're not to me. They're not even connected anymore. They, Thor, Love and Thunder, inconsequential to Multiverse of Madness. Where's all this going? You know, Loki's like, we're going to pick up right after season one. Well, what does that mean? Like, and how does it, and I thought that Kevin Feige said it'll all become clear. Well, I was waiting for some kind of a cohesive announcement where they're going to try and explain or set the tone or say something about how we're going to take you into what is going to be Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, because right now, I don't even have in my mind as a huge Marvel fan and an MCU fan, how do they even get to Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars? And I would propose that- Who are the characters that are gonna be in those movies? That I don't even think would be that big of an issue if the individual films that are coming out right now were beloved by all. Yep. If 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 Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness had come out, and like, I enjoy that film, but if Multiverse of Madness had come out and it was widely beloved, it wouldn't be an issue so much for a lot of people that, well, how does this connect to everything else? If Thor Love and Thunder had come out and was beloved instead of divisive, I don't think it would be as big of an issue. But because they're not beloved, the other issues start to become magnified, uh, like this one. Dude, I totally agree. And, you know, we're in the multiverse saga. That's what they're calling it. It's got its own logo. Multiverse of Madness, to me, should have ended on a note where the universe is fractured things are going crazy what the hell's gonna happen next and when it was over i'm like oh okay because it didn't seem to have any consequences to anything else it wasn't setting up anything else other than oh you know charlie theron's now in the mcu and has gone off with dr strange does anybody know does it matter i mean i want narrative forward narrative momentum and we haven't seen any of that in the last five six movies that marvel's released and i think Again, I just want to go back to this as a missed opportunity. At D23, they could have announced, said a couple of things that I think would have totally reinvigorated everybody, totally got the fan base excited. And again, it's it's I only make a big deal out of this because Disney makes a big deal out of this. This is D23. They hype this thing up like crazy. This is the event. And the event came and went like, again, a fart in the wind. Anyway, Chris, um, you see all this, you hear what they did and did not bring mm -hmm. up and talked about. I don't know, as far as did they accomplish what they set out to do? Was it a missed opportunity? I don't know, when you look at all the stuff that came out of D23, how do you look at it? I mean, for me, and I, I didn't go, right? So I don't have the sting of That's like funny, not being there. <laughs> <laughs> but but I also, the year that, that I went with you, but I didn't get to get into stuff, I had a blast because I just got to talk to people and go take pictures and get merch and do all this stuff, which is kind of my favorite thing to do at cons. Like Aaron and I had a blast just talking to all the exhibitors and asking them questions. And I kind of like that more than going to panels, honestly. Um, it might not be popular, but I like that. For me, the only thing missing here really was I did expect, and that's on me, I did expect a fantastic forecast announcement. I really, really did. Just because there's been so much speculation and we've seen all these things about Marvel talking to this person and that person. So that's the one I was pretty bummed about. 
But I got to say, they did get me excited about, you know, Thunderbolts, which I wasn't before. They got me excited about Secret Invasion, which I was a little lukewarm on before. Um, Moon Girl and Di Devil Dinosaur looks really, really cute. The little mermaid footage was just amazing. Wait, but that's outside but that's out of the, yeah. the Lucasfilm Marvel big panel. Yeah. There, were so there were some successes D23 had as far as for the for Disney, Disney brand itself. Disney but and Disney was, animation I'm kind of was. focusing on the that the big Lucas yeah. Marvel. And, and I understand it was a lot more of the same. And there weren't any like, hey, you came here and you get to see this exciting new thing. You're here for this announcement. And I get how that is a bummer. I do wish they did a little more. But I don't know. I don't know. I think I think what we saw was okay. And maybe that's that's not enough. Maybe uh, if you're going to put on a festival and do your own convention, it needs to be more than a fun celebration of the existing IP you already have. Maybe it does have to be a little bit more. But on the whole, I think they did a good job of just ex uh, celebrating what they've done. I do understand y'all's point, though, of Star Wars in particular needing to really up the ante here just because we've had so many lukewarm properties. Well, and other than the, again, the one thing I think that they did announce, which again, at any other time would have been considered a second or third level announcement is, mm -hmm. hey, this one character who's already in the MCU is going to be in Thunderbolts yeah. and this character. A couple of trailers were pretty good, but you don't need D23 to drop trailers. This is so true. I mean, that Mandalorian trailer could have dropped any time. Mm -hmm. When you are holding an event like this, where you're gathering people together, you're telling all the media to turn your eyes on you, that's the time to make announcements. And again, like some people would criticize and say, well, what do you, John, you want them to give you a full, like phase five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 layup? No, no, no. I just want one. Just some new information just would be something. cool. Just something, just something. Some, just a little something. What if some things just aren't ready? Let's, no, let's no, be that's, real. That's Ooh. why. Let's that's be real. The thing. No, are we, are we literally be real. saying Disney, like Marvel, Lucasfilm, out of the 20, 30 projects they have working on, they literally have zero ready to announce? Listen, even we already know Deadpool 3 is happening. I mean, that at minimum. Like, I understand. Like, so my theory about why the Fantastic Forecast wasn't announced, mm -hmm. which they didn't need to, but my theory is, and this might be wrong, <clears throat> is that they don't have every actor signed yet. They might already know who's mm. going to play it and they might be in negotiations, but they don't want to have egg on their face. And this is wise. They don't want to have egg on their face that they announce that Pauly Shore is playing Ben Grimm. But he's doing he's, a lot this year. Uh, he's, I mean, Pauly Shore Good is really job, busy Pauly right Shore. now. But Pauly Shore is playing Ben Grimm only two, three weeks from now, have those negotiations break down. It didn't happen. And now they, they, they're they embarrassed. And so I... I totally get that if that's the case that they don't have, and, and maybe they have three of them locked down and you'd say, well, why not just announce those three? Well, they yeah. probably <laughs> want to announce the Fantastic Four as right. the Fantastic Four, right? So I think there's probably some good reason why they didn't make that one. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other stuff they could have yeah. done. And did, just one thing. Did the leader announcement get you excited at all? Or was that kind of eh for you? That was, again, that's a second or third tier thing, okay. right? It's like a guy who's going to be in one of the movies that has kind of been in the things before, I'm as excited about it as I was about Abomination coming back, although Abomination is a much more fun character to me than okay. the leader is. So again, I put that on the same level as finding out that Ghost was going to be in Thunderbolt. Sure. That's interesting. But again, it's a guy who's played the role before and is now going to be in this thing. It's like, okay, that's a, that's a decent supporting piece of announcements that you make, a mm -hmm. second tier thing. So, uh, but no. but even things like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three that's been shooting, not that they showed footage for at Comic Con, so you don't have anything more you could show. Uh, us today? I mean, yeah, not so, not have James Gunn come out. What about that holiday special they announced? I mean, I thought it was really oh. cool that we finally got the Werewolf by Night stuff. Oh, that but, looks so good. But here's what I here's what drives me nuts. I mean, for me as a Moon Knight fan, Moon Knight Dave, was in Werewolf by Night. That they're they're irrevocable. Irrevo 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 irrevocably joined together the two of them and it's like is he in this show and i i'm asking as a moon knight fan you gave me moon knight now you're giving me werewolf by night are they together that was my first question this actually looks more satirical werewolf by, by it, night kind of looks it, like a throwback to it the it does but i was like I, i'm fine. like it, i thought it looked great too but i was like i that was a question i had just like i have a question okay how does you're in your multiverse saga how do the Thunderbolts, how does Wakanda Forever, how does Guardians of the Galaxy, how does any of the Marvels, how do any of these upcoming movies, how do they have anything to do 
with your multiverse saga that is going to culminate in Kang Dynasty. Well, I do agree with that. The connecting pieces right now are not there. I mean, it does just feel like spaghetti on the wall in a way, yeah. right? Of just like, we did some stuff and some of it will stick. Oddly enough, I'm actually okay with that because I want that part revealed in the movies and the shows themselves sure. rather than yeah. from a stage. Okay. Uh, but I, again, they just didn't announce anything. I, I, th I think on Friday when uh, Taylor put on the stream of D23 and one of the big parts of that where they were supposed to be showing the games, they did a huge section of just like these new exclusive items at Shop Disney or whatever. And that, then it made sense to me. This is just them publicly displaying things it's just a merchandising so moment buy you know what i mean and then i was kind of like if this if the games day was going to be like a little preview of what what's going to happen with the, with the big the panels big panels then i knew there's going to be some disappointed people i mean I, the only thing i'm surprised is that they didn't show anything from wakanda forever they did to, oh, they did. They only, did. But only to the, the audience that was there, which because, I have no problem with. I, I think the people who got in there were there. They yeah. deserve to have a special treat. Because, so I don't mind that. Because I thought they would use the event to at least show more of what's coming up in the near future. Like um, the things like the fantastic forecast. I, I think that stuff could have been waited just because it would outshine the things that are coming out next month. The next two months, I think announcements like that, especially for things that aren't happening this year. I think it would be a I well in my opinion I I I think it would be like a uh, a waste of time well not a waste of time but a waste well why not just promote the things that are coming out soon so people could get excited for those but then why do you even need D twenty three if you're just if you're just promoting things that are already coming out and everybody already knows about then what you don't need a D twenty three to do that but you can do it for a sense of community for that kind of fan base though the people who do cosplaying the individual merchants and things like that I know it, it's not all congruent but but as a, as just a disney all things disney fan event mm -hmm. sure d23 expo is great to go and you're i mean i saw some great disney princess cosplay the spider family you posted was oh, so precious that made my heart oh. happy seeing that spider family was so great the picture's up on my twitter if you want to go see that it's, it's my favorite picture that, that made I took me that consider weekend. children i mean immediately as, not as just a celebration for people who love the history and all things that is disney mm -hmm. as just an event like that mm -hmm. sure but the precedent they have set with Lucasfilm and Marvel and all that kind of stuff is this is the place where we really, to use my vernacular, drop bombs. This mm -hmm. is our place to do that. And they didn't do it. And, and I would suggest that this year they needed to do it more than ever before, not just because Lucasfilm really needs it right now. And I think Marvel really needs it right now. But this is the first D23 post-pandemic. That's true. When you know that this is the first time they've been able to do this and get everybody together, and it's like, listen, we're back in a big way now. And anyway, next I year, could, next year, John, next uh, year, watch. But well, there's going to be a whole bunch. Lime <laughs> shows of hub. Next year, you know, but, but here's the thing: it gets really expensive to take a chance on stuff like that, though. Yeah, I I don't believe in them anymore. Right. Don't get me wrong; I'm I'm still a you Marvel fan. Right I'm, I mean, don't way. get me wrong, but I. I have zero interest in like even if I didn't have the horrible experience of D23 this year that I had. Even if I was just sitting at home and saw it's coming out, I have zero plans of ever attending a D23 again or Star Wars Celebration or anything like that. I'm never going to this stuff again, like ever. We were even talking around here in the office about getting the whole crew, getting hotels, getting flights, and all of us going to London for Star Wars Celebration. That ain't happening. I ain't doing that now. Well, but you could get my ticket. Though. I mean, yeah, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get yours. <laughs> uh, Ray on I'll, location. I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team. Aw, uh, what a giver. Uh, yeah. yeah. What a guy. <laughs> anyway, guys, question is for you. What did you think about what we did or did not see coming out of D23? Do you think it blew the doors off? Maybe you thought it put you to sleep. Whatever you guys think about it, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.